hello, hello. It's Private Talk Podcast with Alexis Texas, and we are back season three with another After Dark episode. And today, Private Talk, we have Kazumi on the couch. Oh. <laughs> hello, welcome. Hey, I'm so excited. I'm excited to have you here. I'm excited to get to know you a little bit more. I've seen yeah. your sexy pictures all over the Instagram and whatnot. You may not remember me, but I remember washing hands next to you at an AVN oh. many years ago. And I remember texting my boyfriend at the time and being like, I think I just washed my hands next to Alexis, Texas. How <laughs> cute. Were you staring at my ass? Um, yes, and I was mm, staring at your Good for you. Hands. Good girl. Good yeah. girl. Oh, I keep calling like me that. it. <laughs> You're a sub, I see. Mm-hmm. You like I would to say, be. Yeah, I was gonna say switch, but I was like, no, I'm pretty submissive. Is it with females or with men and or both? I think anything. I feel like I like the power of submission. I feel like in my per- in my real life, I feel like I'm a very like high strung, like really anxious person that wants control all the time. So I like to like sexually just like give up and you know explode. <laughs> okay, I like that. So how did you get your start in the industry? Did you start off the bat just doing movies? Was it just mm-hmm. sexy pictures? So I've actually never done pro porn. I've always been an OnlyFans girl. Um, I've kept it exclusive to my page, but uh, starting around two years ago, COVID happened, and I used to be a door-to-door salesman. What were you selling, door-to-door? I was, so I was giving Was this your outfit when you were going door-to-door? Because, I mean, I think a lot of people <laughs> would give you just about anything. Yeah, I, I was a pretty hot door-to-door lady, but, like... It would, they would, it would be me giving out uh, free cell phones to people on EBT or Medi-Cal on government benefits. So they would send me to the projects and like Section 8 and, ki- and like Skid Row and stuff. And during COVID, I was like, oh, I am was not. Was that intimidating? It wasn't intimidating. It was just like during the height of COVID, I was like, um, I don't know if I want to go door to door to someone's yeah. house or like tent to tent to someone's tent like that's kind of you're going crazy. tent to tent bitch yeah bitch bro i was like in there how, like, how does that process work like you really like so like tent, just, like isn't that scary it was scary and i would be holding all these phones and i look like me well i didn't look like were you super, by yourself completely yeah i would be by myself it just sounds dangerous in a bad situation it is but i luckily am alive to this day sucking dick so i Life turned there out fine. There you have it after dark. <laughs> you sucking dick and just fine. Yeah. So sucking dick saved you? I would say, so what happened was during COVID, I quit my job. Is that your job. slogan? Sucking dick saved me. Yeah, it's, thank Start you. Start making t-shirts. Then. Thank you, penises <laughs> of the world. Um, I wanted to buy some titties, and all my sugar daddies at the time were like, yeah, you could, I could buy your titties, but you'll owe me forever. And I'd be like, no, what the frick? Isn't that the opposite of like what sugar daddies are? They're supposed to give you sugar? Yeah, I was like, isn't that the purpose of what the hell? So I decided to take my OnlyFans pretty seriously, and I just made sex tapes with my partner at the time and bada bing bada boom paid for some titties in the first month and i was like let me buy my ass so i actually i'm not sitting right now i've been i haven't sat for a so year. did you get a bbl mm-hmm. or okay can we see your booty can you yeah. stand up for us you have your own little pillow i wondered what you were carrying yeah, around I okay haven't sat in over a year. I'm you haven't sat in over a year because i was built like a hamster before this so i'm kind of afraid of like so when can you <laughs> sit on it like i I could, yeah. I, but like. So when you go out to a club, you bring that thing with you. If I went to clubs, yeah. Okay, so you have a bedazzled one that like fits with every outfit, or you? No, just, it's, a, it's a classic black butt. But I mean, if you everywhere. go, if you go out, you know, you have like the special sparkle one. Yeah, so I, I definitely be. should have like the the sexy pillow. <laughs> you know, going out attire. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so you haven't sat on your ass for over a year. Yeah, I'm very afraid of losing my ass cheeks. The, this pays the bread and butter. You so know? you can't do missionary. I can do missionary if I have a pillow underneath, which I usually did. Anyways, I feel like missionary is my favorite position. I like to. I guess if you're hanging your ass off the bed too. Yeah. You know. There's so many ways, but missionary is my favorite position. So you know, for a little mish, I'll like lay down a little bit. You'll you'll submit the ass. Yeah. A little side, you know, ass. So (laughs) when do you think that you'll have this pillow with you? I will probably carry this pillow for the rest of my life. No, I'm just kidding. Is this pillow have a name? No. Should I name it? Yeah, I'm oh, I'm the queen of naming things. Yeah, what should I name my butt pillow? It gets you can't name it me because I'd be I'd be sitting on you on your face, so it wouldn't be like me like a pillow. But you mm, could definitely sit on my face. It'd be like Mrs. <laughs> Cheeks. No, I don't Mrs. know. Like, we'll, we'll have to come up with something clever before yeah. the end of the After Dark episode. Uh-huh. But yeah, I just think that that's unique because a lot of girls obviously getting a BBL, it's like mm-hmm. you can't sit on it, or that's a recommendation. But yeah. like you. They usually don't last for very long. No, as far I, as like a year is a long committed thing. Dude, but my ass is crazy. 
And I'm an What Asian, does that mean? Dude, I have such a fat ass. And I'm an Asian woman. I so love I how you're like, bragging on your own ass. Dude, Good for I you. love my ass. <laughs> I had no ass. I was built like Hank Hill like a year ago. So like I, I know what life was like before the ass and my life has <laughs> exponentially increased since then. Okay, well you obviously had to be a fan of ass yourself because you said it, you were yeah, standing I next love to your me ass. getting me to put washing your hands <laughs> next to me at an AVN and my yeah. ass was out and about. But so <laughs> did you always want to have a booty or was so, it somebody somebody made you sell self-conscious because you keep making these like digs at yourself that this is what you were built like but what uh-huh. if that some people like that you don't so, always have to have a big booty to be so liked. i was a pretty horny girl before like my before i like got bimbo fied like i went to gangbang bimbo parties fied. Oh, you, you were know? giving all the labels okay <laughs> i would go to gangbang parties i would get like i would like i oh. like to like fuck at parties and have everyone watch so i was about that life <laughs> before i got the fat ass and titties nice. but i feel like it definitely made me more confident and okay. i went outside and did it it never had anything to do with a man. Did you feel like a new like person like fucking again because it's like a new body so like because you're always sexual but then like when you get your new body you like it did it make you feel like different like you said you felt more confident so did that make you? I would say I didn't feel different I felt more like myself like this is what I should have always looked like the whole time because I could have worked out but I naturally didn't have hips, but like adding fat to my hips and now that my fat is here. So did you do a fat transfer? A BB, I, I know. Did, okay. Yeah. Um, lipo 360, which was all over my whole body. And then it was fat transferred to my hips and ass. Okay. So yeah. do you have to like stay on a certain diet to maintain your fat and your ass? I, yeah, I work out really heavily and I like go out and like I eat. No, actually, I eat pretty shitty, but I do work out. Like, I like how you're going to lie to me. Yeah, I was like, I can't lie to you. I feel like I'm a really bad liar. (laughs) Yeah, I would call you out because, you know, I am the dom in this situation. Remember, you like to be subs. You can obey Miss Texas. You got (laughs) to tell me all your truths because it's truth with Texas. Your fans want to know all about you. I mean, you seem pretty open and honest. You Mm -hmm. seem like, you know, you've lived a pretty crazy lifestyle and kind of like it. What kind of brought you, like you said, you always knew you were sexual. Like, Mm -hmm. what was the first, like, orgy thing or something sexual that you got uh-huh. into that you were like I know this is for me because some people do it and they don't yeah. like it or you know whatever but you went full throttle and kept going so I would say like my f- I was getting over a breakup as you do and I was like swiping through tinder as people do <laughs> and one one guy's profile was completely anonymous except it was just an ad to a sex party in the valley or something and you know my 19 year old self was like dude yo where are you from i'm la native dude okay I'm like, you sounded like a valley girl it was in the valley yeah I was in the- the- <laughs> <laughs> my accent's coming out but yeah it's okay that means I, you're telling me the real truth come yeah, on Kazumi. give I'm me a, give me valley girl. Texas, what you need. <laughs> but yeah so you I, saw this ad you, and you decided to answer it yeah because this was after the breakup and you're like fuck it YOLO, I'm 19. Mm-hmm. I want to get fucked. And I was pretty religious growing up. Like, I did the poop hole loophole throughout what high school. What is a poop hole loophole? I just didn't want to go to hell. So I didn't want to have vaginal sex. So I had butt sex oh. all the time. Well, psych. I had it like a few <laughs> times. Poop Wait, the poop hole loophole. Poop hole loophole. <laughs> you know, today I've learned a lot of things after dark, and I am not afraid to admit that I didn't know all these things. Yeah. But you know, <laughs> I'm not the only girl doing the poop hole loophole to avoid. I've hell. heard of. I mean, I know that this exists. I didn't know that that was the name. Yeah, is what I'm saying. <laughs> okay, I like it. Continue. So I and I would always like. I was always into like swinger shit. Like I always wanted to have like ten boyfriends. And How I do you do them. swinger shit if you only are giving your poop hole away? Well, no, I'm now all all holes are open now. Oh, okay. okay, we're we're all full open, throttle. We're all open for business. Okay, <laughs> with like enough preparation and like airtight. Yeah. Isn't that what they call that? Where every hole That's is like um, my dream. I've never done it. Your dream. You yeah. hear that uh, private talk? Your uh-huh. dream is to be airtight. If you don't know what airtight means, that all your holes are plugged up. Yeah, all the available ones. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, obviously. But, yeah. <laughs> so I answered a sex ad. He was like, "Do you want to meet for coffee first? And I was like, "Fuck." No, I need some dick right now because I lost my virginity, my was there a, virginity in like pretty late, like right before college. Was there a picture of the guy or was just, an, how did you? Like, I saw you his ca- abs. He had like a shirtless photo. It felt oh. like a fake photo because I was like, why? You, is, you weren't afraid of being catfish? So I Ubered to his house and he was a hot guy mm. that just seemed to be a horny honey, you know, like me, a hot horny honey. And we like took a drive out to Chatsworth and it turned out to be like a thing that was a porn studio in the daytime and at night they turned it into a sex party. Mm. And I've probably shot porn there. Yeah, you probably have. Lots of skeet everywhere. Oh. You know, no black light is safe in that room. I mean, mine was maybe left. I don't know. I was not there. <laughs> it's a crime. Yeah, but so we. 
um, had an orgy. It was probably my five people. But what really got me was that when I looked up, there was just like a crowd of men just jacking off to like me. Were any of y'all using protection? Yes, I am. This, this is in my. I like how you. I like how you yes. feel like that's an off the wall question. You're fucking five strangers, <laughs> but I, it's not okay for me to ask you yeah. if you're fucking with a condom. Of I mean, course. it's a valid question. I would say I was super reckless, like you know, in my Tinder days where people could raw dog me because I thought mm. it was less slutty or whatever if, if it was just one guy at a time. But I don't know. With five guys, I feel like we need a condom. I, I, I value my life. I have a lot to live for. <laughs> so five guys. I have okay. a dog, you know. I have to go home. <laughs> Bitch, I can't with you. You're hilarious. Yeah. All right. So you five guys. Yeah. But or it was, was it, uh, was, I mean, was it only There was, was women in there, too. Okay. I mean, it was just people like, it was a, a sex party, so people were coming in, joining the little. So you felt pit. liberated. You liked the guys being like what being watched and like them pleasuring themselves to what you were doing because yeah. you liked what you were doing. Yeah, and on top of it, I felt really respected. You know, I felt like it wasn't like my ex who was like kind of a hater about how shit. Like he was, like, everyone was like, "Hey, is it okay to touch you? Is it all right if I kiss you?" And the guys like, you know, I was fucking everyone, and no one was like recording me or being like, "You're a hoe." So was your ex boyfriend like a pimp? Like he's no, I he mean, was. What just do you mean ho shit that like, and you're not recording? He was just a super machismo type of guy that okay. I lost my actual virginity to. Like he was just really into like a lot of like traditional like masculine values about like what men do and what women do so i didn't really feel comfortable exploring things with him she didn't want to get in trouble yeah or if it was too much or and i i lost my virginity to him so i didn't really have like a frame of like if this is good sex or great sex or was like it good whatever. sex it was great sex <laughs> yeah if you're wherever you are man <laughs> i'm back so you, you'd repeat offend i would repeat offend i i would fuck most things again most things I, I'll, what my, things do we talk about my motto is i'll try anything twice you know like if you i uh, say i'll try anything once but twice <laughs> okay i see i i feel like i care about enthusiasm above anything else like is the guy happy to give it to me is he gonna eat me out is he happy to eat me out we're we're in business how do you know that he's happy to eat you out i would say like he's eating me out already you know like like you don't have to like you don't have to instruct him to do it yeah like he's eager to do things i i love a guy who definitely is like i love well i face. also don't see you being like telling someone to do because like you said you like to be submissive so mm -hmm. you want a guy who knows what he wants to do like he wants yeah. to take charge of you sexually you'll do whatever yeah if you if you direct but you into I can, something i can like top from the bottom you know i can definitely be like i want you to like slap me around i want you to choke me I well, want yeah you i mean you're still you're not yeah. mute you're not gonna yeah. not talk but, but you have to you know, ideally give. i would like to be enslaved to the genitals, whatever they are, you know? <laughs> nice. I like yeah. this. But um, I just really was into, like, the attractive, like, like everyone being comfortable, fucking each other, and there was no drama. We were all friends. And then I went the next week, and then I went the next week, and then I went the next And eventually I started throwing my own sex parties. Um, I felt like a sneaky 19-year-old. I was like, yeah, guys, come to my party. And I would just get trained on, like, every Friday or something. Nice. So when you hosted your own parties, did you go around picking everyone you knew or you're like, hey, bring a friend? Like, how does that one? How does that work? Me and my friend would recruit. Or did you put an ad too? I we would like go through field, which is kind of like the swinger app for like, you know, for like ten, like the Tinder app for swinger people. We were on FetLife, which was kind of like a kinky Facebook and shit. I love how you're looking for me to search. Like, I'm like, yes, I have no idea. Yeah, what you're, this it's a, is, it's you don't need to be on that site. Yeah, Thanks. it's your, your <laughs> yeah, you your life is way better not going there. <laughs> I, well, I'm yeah, <laughs> but we mostly looked for like young hot people who okay. were like about having fun like it was cool having like an audience of like geriatric older men like you know jacking off over me but it's kind of cooler when they're hot and I'm like do you like older men i would say again like i like enthusiasm so i've like i've fucked with older guys but it's you like, want them to still be able to do you work yeah, I like a guy you can't that's be, you can't. fit. Like, I like, I like, I love, like, I love fucking, like, Manuel Ferrara and, like, Kieran Lee because they're, like, still fit, you But know? you say that you haven't done porn, but those are porn actors. For my OnlyFans. Okay, yeah. so you're doing your only fucking porn people on your OnlyFans. Mm -hmm. That's been my thing right now. I've just been kind of really nervous about staying exclusive because my parents still don't know what I do. So I've been keeping How it on OnlyFans. How do you pull fans. that off? I literally just started talking about cryptocurrency until they tell me to shut the fuck up. 
Like, do you know a lot about cryptocurrency? I know like enough to confuse my old Asian parents. You know, okay. like I'll start talking. But do you about, go to their house dressed like this? Oh, definitely not. <laughs> no, I. I don't know. <laughs> I would say like this is. I look like this like one person at a time, specifically okay. for like, you. Yeah. And like that. thank um, you for dressing yeah, up. Yeah, it was just for me. No pants. It's very on. sexy. I like it. <laughs> But no, with my parents, I feel like I have no makeup on, no lashes. I look like a boy. I just wear a shirt and pants. So you're, a, <laughs> you know, like childlike in a sense. Like yeah, where it's like, I would say I'm back to being like the older, dumber sister that just kind of is bored all the time, you know. So do you think that there is any possibility that they could find out about it? I would say. And how would they really react? At this point right now, I could probably retire them tomorrow if they really gave me shit about it. But it's more like, I feel like they don't understand that the OnlyFans world is so different than the world that they're used to. Like, I feel like I'm not, I'm only doing exactly what well, I want to do. Why don't you explain it to them? Dude, they would commit seppuku. They would like probably oh, like, <laughs> that's like a, like the. My what the, language are we? Saying? That's the Japanese, um, the samurais would like commit uh, suicide after they okay. felt dishonored and shit. Learning. So, no, my parents would explode. Um, so I so would it's just say, like in an older, you know, they're yeah. more and they, traditional. What happened was when I was 19, they were really strict and they kicked me out. So I was kind of like a little chronically houseless. Oh, How no, old not, are you now? Oh, I'm 25. Okay. Um, so I was chronically houseless for a bit, like, you know, like couch surfing and just figuring my life out. And I recently started reconnecting with my parents and our relationship is finally good and I help yeah. out. So I feel like if I was like, hey, I'm also getting butt fucked. By 50 guys. Well, I never would say any of that. <laughs> yeah. There's ways of doing things. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you know, obviously, a you know, big shock value of certain yeah. things. But like, even with, you know, my family telling them, I had to tell them, you know, it mm -hmm. wasn't something that you don't know how to tell your parents because it's something I liked, may not yeah. because it's something they would ever do, but, you know, mm -hmm. something for myself. But it's ways of doing it. And not necessarily, I think it takes time. If you're just building a relationship, yeah. that's a beautiful thing because, you know, they are your parents and so they need, you know, it's mm -hmm. good to have that relationship. So within time, you know, yeah, it's just I like you do to. adult stuff or even like you find your own way of saying whatever your, your how your money is coming from because they're mm -hmm. not dumb either. And they know yeah. that obviously, like you said, if you could retire them, whatever, that's a lot of money that they mm -hmm. would see some way or another, even if you're dressing, going to their house with a t-shirt oh, on, yeah. if it's where you <laughs> live or your car or whatever that is, you know? So it's just take that into consideration of maybe one day you find a mm -hmm. way, an easy way to conversate that Yeah, I wouldn't that say in. I got butt and, fucked, yeah. actually. <laughs> I would be your ass, girl. I would be yeah. like, what'd you say to me? No. You don't talk to your mom like that. But, yeah. you know, it's just one of those things. It's, it's mm -hmm. because it's like, it's freeing for yourself as well because yeah. I'm sure the stigma of like, you know, you want your parents to, you know, be proud of you and they are mm -hmm. proud of you. And yeah, I definitely it's just, live in that anxiety. Like, it's like, like our relationship has finally gone to a good place yeah. so i want to make sure like when i tell her it, it's it, like you know? right and stuff you know because they're getting older and i'm sure they're like well, how are you doing this like going on vacations and stuff mm -hmm. <laughs> So you said sugar daddies. Mm -hmm. Do you still currently have sugar daddies? Are you dating? Are you single? Are you so have sugar daddies? Are I you love OnlyFans because it's a lot of residual money. Like I'm making money off of a sex tip I did yesterday or two years ago, three years ago. It's my intellectual property. I'll always own it. So, um, sorry, what was the start of your question? <laughs> <laughs> I brain farted. You know, it's okay. It's all right. Yeah. So you say that you're, it's your property. Oh, so my sugar daddies. No, I don't have them anymore because I wanted residual money. Like, I didn't want to physically So are you saying, there. like, with OnlyFans, like, because it's so much residual income, too, like, and you're talking to your fans, are they semi kind of like your new sugar daddies? I would say they're my sugar daddies the same way, like, if I was, like, working in corporate, my boss is my sugar daddy. Well, they're buying your stuff as far yeah. as, like, they're your fan base, and so mm -hmm. they're giving you money. And it's something yeah, where you're no, not they're really my daddies for real. Like, I... I really, I'm a, I'm a man lover. Like, I really appreciate men. I feel like I have a sugar mama kink myself. I spoil the frick out of men your, and stuff. Your, or your, your love, the way you give love is respect. Yeah, gifts. because I feel like Can't. men don't really get spoiled or celebrated at all, especially if they celebrate women. You know, it's like seen as like simping or being weak to a lot What's of other What's the guys. most thing that you've kind of like indulged for a man? I, I bought my ex a car. Um, I've like, I also like pay to rent. I make sure they don't pay for anything. I always pay a guy's dinner. I don't know. I'm like, I'm just an insane. And they let you? I mean, they always like to have some pushback, but I know they're like, yeah, you could 
you can pay my dinner. <laughs> I also just fear having like transactional relationships in my real life anyways. Like I want a guy to feel like I want to fuck him and he wants to fuck me without fe- feeling like he has to buy my time if I want to Well, I there. think that also comes with, you know, maturity of, and, and communication and boundaries in relationships because mm-hmm. I think it should be give and take. I don't think mm-hmm. that, I think in, you know, the modern yeah. day now, women do make a lot of money, you know, sometimes more than men. And sometimes it's, you know, the role reversal, but it's like, like in that situation of like, okay, Mm -hmm. maybe I'll get dinner this time or vice versa. Because as a woman too, you still want to feel spoiled and you still feel like to be taken care of. Maybe feel safe, you know, those things that were, if you couldn't do it, that they could. Yeah. You know, so it's like you got to have a give and take. Mm -hmm. I definitely have had a lot more healthy relationships nowadays now that I do porn or OnlyFans or whatever. And I feel like I understand where my boundaries are because I used to have such bad boyfriends who were so mean to me, you know, and they would just take and take. And it feels good to have partners who are present and understand where I'm coming from and don't think what I do is weird. And it's just easy. Like, I I love like a regular schmegular guy. (laughs) <laughs> so you would date a nine to five guy? Oh yeah, absolutely. I I would say for me though is like I just need to make sure that he's open about being a swinger. I like to share my men with women and I like my man to share me with his friends or, or other people, any type of person. Um, so I just want to make sure that he is about non-monogamy and doing it like ethically because I just, I'm really so old and tired of like the toxic like relationship First stuff. of all, you're not old, but no, you are but tired I'm, of the I'm, bad I'm bullshit. Tired old. For sure. I'm old and tired of it. Yeah. For sure. For sure. I get what you're saying. Mm-hmm. I think that, you know, it's definitely, you just, it's about communicating and standing and who you want to be. And you're mm-hmm. obviously an, um, naturally a sexual person and, you know, you got to indulge in it. And that's about yeah. being, finding a partner that suits your lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Um, so how often you say, you know, you shoot with porn stars on your site. How often are you giving new content? I would say I'm probably trying to draw. I'm trying to slow down because when I first started shooting content, I was like so excited to be like, I have a new video of Johnny Sins. I have a new video here and here and here. And now I'm trying to do it like w- once a week. You know, I do try to shoot every day right now. I'm like on my like grind mode. Um, are you paying these performers or are you doing content trades with them? I'm doing content trade, which is which works for me because I feel like it's an equal Thing. I've never gotten paid for porn yet. Especially because they, you know, too have big names, and so mm-hmm. I'm sure like it's a, um, a, yeah. a shock value to be like, oh, how did you get this person? And so mm-hmm. I, I think it suits, you know, both of it. So did yeah. you get intimidated? Like, were you fans of Manuel or Johnny Sins? Are the two names that you just said? Yeah. Were those? Were you fans of their dick that you were like, I, would, I need to try them, and you like contacted them? Like, how did that, you know, interaction yeah, happen? I would say the the first big or porn star I like shot with was Lena Mm -hmm. and Adam um because I was on their podcast and from after after being on No Jumper it kind of opened a lot of doors because Angela White DM'd me and was like hey do you want to shoot and I was like yes I saw y'all's pictures together yeah 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 that's why at first I was confused I was like have you done porn but you're with all the porn people I was Mm -hmm. confused like but she's sexy and putting all her pictures out everywhere so I was like I know she does OnlyFans yeah so but I do hardcore porn on my only hands. Oh, yeah, I've yeah. just been keeping it exclusive because I'm just still, I want to just break it to my parents myself and I don't want like someone to show them a video or whatever. Hey, look, frick. it's your content, your body, your choice. The, you know, the mm-hmm. beautiful thing about, you know, the world that we're in right now is that there are so many platforms that you can yeah. use, you know, for your own, however you want to use mm-hmm. it, you know, obviously. So it's, take your time. You no, know, yeah. there's no right or wrong. It's whatever feels right for you. And if it's a never, don't do it if it is yeah cool. but I hope you'll figure it out mm-hmm. I've It'll definitely been time. thinking about doing pro maybe once or twice just for the exposure but honestly like I've been really enjoying podcasts and doing like safer work like thing that leads into my only fans instead do you have like a wish list like person that you would like to work with uh, as an Asian woman if I I don't know if Asa Akira would ever shoot with me, but if she did, she was so in charge of my sexual awakening as an Asian like woman because just struggling with like being comfortable being sexual growing up, like I feel like her porn like imprinted my brain, you know? Like when I see it, it's like I go see her in my dreams. So I would love to shoot with her. I would love to shoot with like Riley Reed, Abella Danger, like the Mount Rushmore of like, you know, like sexy people. But I also just like really see what they've done for themselves in terms of like creating a personality that people can relate to outside of porn so i really want to like get in their heads and understand that as well i love that i think that it's great to have you know female people that you look up to especially if that's what what awakened you and to Mm -hmm. kind of mimic kind of what you're doing and you know creating a brand and sticking with that yeah (laughs) who would you say was your first celebrity crush my first celebrity crush like like in general yeah ever i would say it honestly was trey songs ew (laughs) (laughs) 
Did you have an encounter with him that made it an ew? No, like, I've just seen all the news and press <laughs> about him being an ew type of guy. It gave me the ick. So if he asked, I would still fuck. I would still be like, hell yeah. If he said, hey, I'll do your OnlyFans. Yeah, like, yeah, no, I would love to have a celebrity on my OnlyFans. Or I guess we all kind of are in our ways. <laughs> True. So that was your first. So what was your, when after being who you are as, mm-hmm. you know, Kazumi, like yeah. what did you, who was your celebrity crush then? Did you ever see somebody at a party or something you crushed on that maybe you like slid into For a DM? the longest, it was Isaiah Maxwell. <laughs> For the have you worked with him yes i finally did he like surprised me with like roses and flowers oh, and I he's almost, a gentleman yeah i almost exploded on the spot i was like this is so sweet I'm panties never, wet yeah i was soaked if i was wearing them you know <laughs> so are you someone who doesn't like to wear panties at all i don't wear panties at all girl what do you do with your wet pussy you just walk around with, like, i'm a creamer leg? so i just do my laundry often <laughs> So what if you're walking it throughout the day? Like, you don't yeah. have problems? You just, you know, I just kind of, like, cute leave cute. it. It's good moisturizer. I have a friend who, he does a, he's a guy, and he doesn't wear underwear, but he always wears a condom when he's with a girl, which is, like, so strange. What do you me. mean? Like, just, like, if they're fucking or not? Yeah. Like, but well, how do you I mean, wear the, condom soft? Yeah, I, I guess it's just holding on. Like, he's, like, showing holding me. Holding on pulled, for <laughs> And, like, pulled out his pants, and he, his soft so, dick is wearing a condom. So, for, like, pre-cum purposes? Like, why? Um, just to be ready. He his, he said, like, it's so Just awkward. to be ready? It's, what does that <laughs> mean? He was, that like, is, he was like, I get so soft when I'm in front of a girl putting the condom on, so I just want to have it in my dick like already and i'm like yeah i guess i don't know how difficult it is as have a man. you how would you feel if you were about to suck a man or fuck a man and you pulled out his pants and a condom was already there how would you feel you know i would kind of <laughs> like to be i kind of like to feel like this was a surprise for him like i like him to be like oh you want to have sex with me that's definitely not a surprise oh, yeah. he's like which bitch am i gonna yeah. fuck tonight yeah i'd be like i don't know man bitch if i if someone pulled down their pants and had a condom on already i would be like you need to go home yeah you need to go you need to yeah. think about your life and you need to go home <laughs> if you were with a girl and you were like not trying to pre-come on yourself I understand, but if you're out and just about yeah. and you're ready, no, sir. Yeah, no. I was. So I'm all about safety, but no. It happened because I was about to suck his dick, and I kind of was like, okay. I was like, so do you? Want so me he to was s- like, wait, let me take the condom off real quick. No, I sucked his condom dick. No, I was, I was like, <laughs> no, no, no. I was like, you know what? You go for safety, I guess. <laughs> uh, I can't say I haven't sucked the condom dick, but no. Yeah. <laughs> I did it, and I did, no, no. I used no. to have this slave in college that was like really into like being girl, like cute. every everything that comes out of your mouth. I'm like, what? <laughs> what? Yeah, oh my God. Uh, yeah. All right, your slave in college. So, and he was really into like cucking, which is you know super cool, super super kind of like mid fantasy at this point in this. So let age. private talk after dark know what cuckolding is. Alexis Texas obviously knows what it is, but yeah. tell us what cuckolding. Alexis is. Texas obviously knows what it is. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, so, no, unfortunately. Yeah. So I would say cucking is kind of like you know like I'm the wife and let's say you're the bull and you're fucking me and then my like loving husband is a cuck because he's jacking off watching and not participating so he was into that so basically your partner that you know you're watching your partner get fucked yeah but like it turns you on because yeah she's a hoe and it's like so humiliating and shit yum (laughs) so um what he would want me to do is he would want me to save the condoms of the guys i was fucking oh no where is this going and i would run over to his house and he would slurp the condom up like a go Ah! like he'd be like and i'd be like okay but I felt like it made, I had to stop because all the guys I dated were like, why the fuck are you saving the condom? Like, what the fuck is wrong? They like, thought you were trying to get pregnant, <laughs> bitch. They were like, like, where? I need my hot sauce. Where? Yeah. <laughs> like, I would, like, dig in the trash can. I'd be like, it's for my friend. Like, trust me, I'm not trying to get pregnant right now. Yeah. How do you explain yourself? Uh, yeah. Oh, my God, I cannot. <laughs> It's for my friend, and they were like, uh, okay, yeah. cool, take it. Well, he wanted guys to come in me, and he would eat the little cream pie out, but I was oh, like, um, no. So I would have to, we had a compromise. <laughs> you had to compromise. You're yeah. so nice. Yeah, I like to meet the middle, meet in the middle, you know? <sighs> hmm. Did you make out with this person after he go guarded no. the cup? No, so he had, no. <laughs> so he was, <laughs> he go guarded the cup. So he was, like, such a little cuck. Like, he was like, so I will never, like, touch you or, like, anything. If, besides, like, eating out. So we never kissed or so anything. So what did you get out of this? 
Um, I would say. Was it financial? Three hundred bucks, dude. At that. Uh, what a month. No, every little gogurt sesh, you know. Uh, so uh, at the time, uh, I used to work at Shake Shack, and okay. I was a fried cook. So. It was worth it. 300 bucks for a go-gurt of nut is way better than I mean, you didn't, he wasn't hours. touching you. I get it. I get yeah. It. No, life is great. It's just strange. Yeah. I always got, like, the weirdest sugar daddies, which is why I stopped. I had one sugar daddy who was really into, like, tying me up and, like, leaving me <laughs> in the closet for, like... For how long? Like, an hour or so. And I would just hear him, like, watch TV or, like, laugh outside and smoke. And I'd be like... Were you like, hey, excuse me, I'm in here. <laughs> well, Did you forget I, about me? No, there would be people at the party and oh. stuff. So I would be like, okay, I guess I'm just stuck in the closet. for, And then we wouldn't have sex. We would not. Would that like, make you mad? Um, no, I kind of was like, I don't want to have sex with this guy. After being stuck <laughs> in an hour. I mean, for an hour. Yeah, I was like, I mean, if, if I was tied up for an hour, I would like to be fucked. Or... But if it's this guy, like it's you can like blue me. lips. It's like you're fucking tying me up. Blue this lips, li- yeah. You're funny. It's because you know it's a s- equivalency of blue balls. You know, yeah. it's like you're like you're horny. You're thinking you're gonna get uh-huh. a surprise, and there's no fucking surprise. Yeah, it was like anyway, a weird for an hour. mind trip. It was like the first time it happened. I was like, it's been a while. Like I felt like I felt like the sun went down and stuff. So let's not do this anymore. Did you ever think he was never coming back? Um, no, he was always outside. I guess like. <laughs> I, he you couldn't like, like get up and like walk outside. No, and be like he hogtied me, bro. Hogtied. Yeah, like it was like pretty pretty brutal. I mean, I kind of am into kinky stuff, and yeah. again, I'll try anything twice. So I met up with him twice, and after the second time, I was kind of like, this might not be my my. So thing. what have you what have you tried twice that was off limits? I would say the third time. The third <laughs> time. I, okay, one thing I did not try twice was knife play. That was kind of weird. Mm. I was at a party. Where was the knife? Um, it was just like, it was a dull knife. I'm not stupid. But I was at a party and this guy was doing <laughs> knife play to another girl. And I was like, he seemed like a, a like a pretty pro dom type of guy. So where it seemed like I could trust him. So I was like, cool, my turn. And I like laid down. And as soon as the knife like started like tracing my boobs and my pussy lips, I kind of was like... Yeah, let's like. Did it leave marks or did you draw blood? No, no. Was it, it was, just like a. It was just like dragging on the dull side uh, of the knife. And it was very slow, but it was also like we were at a party. Everything was like so chaotic. And I was like, okay, like I don't want him to like Something slip, slip and, up and, and like, you know, my like lip I have is no gone. clit or anything. Yeah, anymore. that would yeah. be very tragic. <laughs> I kind of need that. So you have this like seems to be like very free living type of life. You know, mm-hmm. you're into very like high energy high things what are some of like three rules in life that you like kind of ground yourself with in that chaos i would say like a big one is you know it's it's none of your business it's none of my business what you think about me i you know i'm obviously a major slut and i've been i've been told every insult under the sun about like my choices but i've always done it ethically i've always done it safely i don't i've never like been to cheaty or like you know been a other girl You've been honest about it yeah i've always like played ethically i've always gotten tested like pretty frequently um so like you know, like a lot of people want to insult me, but it's it's not my business. You're entitled to your opinion, you know? And yes, as everybody, and people are open mm-hmm. to interpretation, but what are three rules that you kind of stay grounded for, oh. like, your chaotic life? Like, if it's maybe you meditate, maybe mm-hmm. it's you never cheat, never, like, would, whatever, like, rules that are grounding a mo- life. That's a mantra I tell myself mm-hmm. all the time because people, you know, I'm, I've been on No Jumper a lot, and all the comments yeah. are always like, I hate Kazemi. So it's it's uh, it's just remembering. You can't please everybody, yeah. you know. And, it's, you know, for me, it's about my biggest thing is, like, to each his own. Mm-hmm. What works for you may not work for me, but yeah. we put our pants on every single day just like each and every one of us do. Mm-hmm. And so as long as you respect me and my space, and I respect you and who yeah. you are as a person. And that's, you know, what it should be throughout through life. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And that's why it shouldn't be a judgment, but it should be, a, you know, a, a standard of life of, like, mm-hmm. I'm not hurting anybody by myself. Do yeah. you, you know? Right. And I, I guess, like, for me, like, communication is key. I, I would say I over-communicate. I always want to, like, touch base and make sure you're okay and, like, this is all things you want to do and things I want to do. Um, and I, and, I, and that's a big reason why I love what I do with my OnlyFans because I'm only doing exactly what I want to do, having sex with the people I want to have sex with. And when I'm tired, I'm tired, and I just don't do it, you mm-hmm. know, because I'm setting my own schedule and stuff. What's the best advice you've ever gotten? Um... 
if you can make it out in your mind, you can make it anywhere. You know, I, again, like I used to be kind of like an overthinker and I kind of like, like people don't believe me when I say this, but I actually have some pretty, like, I'm like pretty socially anxious. Like I don't really go to clubs or bars or loud places. Like I'm kind of like a homebody. I just happen to like really like some weird sexy things sometimes and I fuck for work. But um, yeah. <laughs> I think most people in that like high sexual field, like in, in like, you know, like the adult world mm -hmm. are very more introverted. And that is yeah. like when we are, when you're high, like, I feel like it's like a yin and yang of things. Like when you're high about something, it's low on other things. Mm -hmm. Like myself, like I don't, I like to be out and I like to go and entertain myself, but I'm not out all the time. Like whatever, you yeah. know, for me, it's more, I'd rather go to club couch and have a great conversation or yeah. go to, you know, get dinner and do, you know, whatever. I'm a dinner girl. That's like my hobby. I like to eat and I like to, I would say like, I don't even have that much sex besides like that, like monthly train and like work, you know, mm. like I would say I have a pretty like, like homely life watching anime and being lame. <laughs> What's the best pickup line that's ever been used on you? You know, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't really know. I would say I'm a pretty easy girl. <laughs> So I would say like, so they're like, hey, come here. Yeah. Sit right here. Yeah, I'll You're do gonna... it. <laughs> I would say like. So if they're open to the opportunity. If they're open to the opportunity, I'm in there like swimwear, dude. <laughs> Give it a shot. Uh -huh. With Kazumi. Mm, yeah. <laughs> what is your favorite meal? My favorite meal. So I'm Asian. So I actually cook quite a bit. Um, my favorite meal is shabu shabu, which is like Japanese hot pot. It's like it's like K barbecue, except it's like a pot of boiling broth, and then you're putting like raw meat. Is it like ramen type? Um, it's more like meat based, so it's like oh. me putting like like brisket and like shit like that in the pot and being like, yum, slurp. <laughs> yum, slurp. Yeah. What's your favorite food? Are you a Texan girl, like ribs and stuff? I don't eat red meat. I don't eat pork. Oh really? Yeah. The last six years of my life, so at least maybe a little bit more. Um, I eat chicken, turkey. I think mm. for me, fried chicken is probably my weakness. I love Korean fried chicken. It's um, probably my favorite. Like, I like the meal. I like crunchy textures of mm. things. So I like yeah. I think that would probably be like my favorite meal. But I also like pasta. Yeah, all those. I'm bad kind of a slave to the carbs. booty. <laughs> yeah, I'm not really I guess except for pasta. But mm -hmm. I'm um yeah. I definitely am not a big carb person. Yeah. Oh, you're stronger than me. <laughs> I, I just need to eat carbs. I love rice and noodles and fried <laughs> shit. <laughs> Have you ever gone through a partner's phone? Um, you know what? I haven't. I again, like, Has I someone like, gone through your phone. Oh yeah, for sure. I've what they find, girl? You know what? Nothing. So like, I have always told every partner I've ever dated, like, look, I want to be in an open relationship, and we're gonna go at your pace if you're not comfortable with that. Like, you know, like we'll start slow, couple swap, do shit like that. But I always had boyfriends that were like, oh, uh, I want to be monogamous, and then they would cheat on me. Boo! But I feel like them cheating on me made them really paranoid that I would always be the cheater. So they would always go my. For, for my phone and think they would find stuff and they never would is that why you're so the way your views on sex are because you've been cheated on in the past or have you always been i would open? say i've always been open like i always told guys up front like this is what i want to do but and you said they want to be monogamous and then you choose to be in it where most yeah. of you are like hey i don't want a monogamous thing mm -hmm. You wouldn't. That's I was, what I'm saying. Like, if they cheated on you, was it kind of like, okay, well, this is why oh, I wanted no. to be monogamous? In high school, I in high school, I always was like, let's just we're in fucking high school. Like, let's like explore. Like, let's have like a healthy sexual exploration. I think with that's many like. People. I think that's great. I mean, I, ideally, people are like, oh, that's so whatever. But for me, it's like it's real. Like, you're being yeah. a realist. You're not being someone that's like some yeah, fairy like, tale. Like, like whatever. All these things. <laughs> I mean, because it's just factual. Like, it's you know, you get, most people don't go to the same or stay in the same place. People mm -hmm. go away to college. You're in a place in your life that you have yeah. so many things that are different. Yeah, and I don't want to feel tied down. But yeah, I had after like the first few boyfriends cheated on me. I. Cause you know, I really liked them at the time and I was like, okay, maybe we could try this monogamy shit out every time they would cheat on me. And it just came down to them wanting to control me or feel, or they just felt like, you know, like I would be fucking all the time and stuff. So I kind of was like, yeah, from here on out, this isn't going to, anyone who wants to date me, it's an open relationship. Do you carry condoms with you when you go out? Do you, because you are such a sexual person, do you carry contraceptives with you? I carry condoms my little baby vibrator, because I have to come. I don't care. Um, baby wipes, 
and like usually like a little travel pack. So you have a whole like, tra- a whole travel pack. Yeah, I used to be like called like the, the orgy grandma. Like I always had like a duffel bag full of like condoms, a duffel gum. bag, dude, condoms, gum, like the big Hitachi, like you know, like all you the came, things. For you fun. came for war. You're yeah. like sexual war will be <laughs> happening tonight. I came here to battle. <laughs> That's hilarious. Mm-hmm. Do you like wearing lingerie or do you like to be naked? I like costumes. I like role play. I like schoolgirl outfits, maid outfits, nurse outfits. Like I like to feel like I'm wearing clothes and I like feeling like I'm a different person for a moment and like not feeling accountable for my actions for the next hour. (laughs) Is there any common sexual act that you do not like? I would say um, I'm trying to get into like <laughs> I'm trying to get into eating ass. Like I feel like like my next elevation is like. Why do you up. say you're trying? Did you have a bad experience, or you know that guys like that and you just want to do it? Like- I I've always like every time I've done anal, I've always given poop dick. I've never been like prepared the right way. So do you not like anal? I want to like anal because I really want to be airtight. It's like like a like a like a bucket list thing that I have to do before I like die. Like how you salute. Yeah, and before I do airtight, I got a DP and before I DP, I got to do anal, you know, before I walk So you haven't crawl. done any of them. So not for my only fans just But in yet. just general. I have done a poop hole loophole, yeah, in like high school, but I haven't like But that's just anal. Yeah, I haven't done like DP stuff yet. I've like had okay. a butt plug in while getting Does it count? You need yeah. two dick two dicks i need them stacked like jenga pieces <laughs> that's hard to find sometimes but the mm-hmm. professional status it can happen yeah <laughs> but yeah it's something i definitely want to like prepare for but right now i would say like i still am not really seedy about eating guys asses i'm open to it but, but I just, have you done it yeah i've done it but i feel like it's not something i do on the first date maybe third date or something the first date yeah. i don't know a lot of people who eat ass on the first yeah. date but <laughs> me i mean maybe you yeah. should put be put on the appetizing menu yeah sometimes i'll do a scene with a guy and then he'll just start eating my ass and i'm like whoa you have no idea what i just did before i got here man like but I, do you not clean yourself before your scene i would say yeah like but you would l- say but you know yes yeah. or no I, yeah absolutely i didn't like just freshly shit you know well obviously but what i'm saying but you don't know what i just did nobody yeah. cares if you went to like you shower uh-huh. you take a whatever you do yeah, you clean whatever yourself. You do. as sex workers like yeah. you're supposed to come to play with everything prepared. i don't know i feel like i still have like butt fear like i feel like i'm still like oh i don't know you know probably because you like you said you when you were i have like before, ptsd you had, from poop dick yeah mm, poopy dick <laughs> <laughs> the last time you had sex the last time i had sex was about like two hours ago with zach wild and jesse pony woohoo it was pretty good because I haven't had a really like kept like really great threesome in a while, like where I feel like everyone's like participating and like spitting on each other and having fun. So I so felt, you're freshly spit on. Yeah, no, I'm covered in drool. <laughs> <laughs> where was the cum shot? Um, it was on my boobs. So and you're probably still a little, you know. I'm still a little crusty, but she <laughs> ate it off, you know, so mm. she got her calorie count for the day. And then I kind of rinsed. <laughs> How often do you masturbate? I feel like I masturbate like about like two or three times a day just to get the edge off. But I don't think it's necessarily because I'm horny. I feel like I just want like the like a little serotonin boost and I'm like, cool. I'm ready to take What other drugs on. do you do? <laughs> you know, I actually am completely sober. Is there, have you ever taken a pill without knowing what it was? Oh, no. I like, so I'm, I live, I had such a sheltered life growing up. I feel like stuff like that is like, mm, gives me the heebie So maybe that's what your drug replacement is. Yeah. Is like, that kind of like. Having like very strange sex. Well, no, but it's like the feeling of what, like you're chasing that high. Mm-hmm. Like that's what you're, like the same thing with people do with drugs. It's like, always yeah. I smoke weed. You're chasing the high of feeling, you know, I'm like, I'm such mm-hmm. an empty person. I like to be calm, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's you definitely my it advice <clears throat> for sure. It's like the fit, it's the one thing I'll go like absolutely like bananas for. You OD on sex, yeah, or, or orgasming, not yeah. just sex. You, said you come two, three times a day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> hmm. Before OnlyFans, did you ever film yourself having sex? Oh yeah, and I feel like that's why like starting my OnlyFans was kind of easy because again, I've had pretty good relationships with guys I've casually fucked because I'm just I just love to fuck and I'm no drama. So I w- I had access to like getting their model release forms from like guys I fucked when I was 19 and like 20 and like college and shit. So I felt and it was stuff I always just recorded because you know I just like loved to like watch myself fuck like and also I'd always been fucking in front of like crowds of strangers anyways. So it was like an easy thing to do. What do you think is the biggest crowd you? fucked in front of i once fucked in this like 
there was this like place in like near Pasadena that was like basically like a football stadium of fucking like mattresses hmm. on the floor. It even had a buffet line. But how many people were in? <laughs> like where you like where when you were fucking that they were watching you? I would say that was probably like maybe like a hundred or so people. And I always think to myself like where are those people now? They're probably like working at Chick Fil A or like like you know like the concierge or something. And they just saw me. They like, were probably real... working at Chick Fil A at the time. They were there too. Yeah. They were just... <laughs> <laughs> and I I really like those parties because they were they're like civilian parties they're not like professional porn stars who know how to fuck or make it look hot like it's just like your average joe schmo with his wife and they're just like you know like having like four minute awkward sex have you ever broken up a marriage no so again i play ethically baby i have definitely you use that word a lot yeah it's just so i feel like someone like said something to you that you weren't ethical at some time when you i to, feel like, like a lot of the times people hate on hoes and sluts because they think we're doing an uh, like like unethically and it's like important for me to say like yeah i'm definitely getting dick to fuck down mm -hmm. but i'm definitely like not hurting anyone's feelings i've been like the, i've been the um i've like been the cuck queen for a couple before where they've like paid me to like fuck her husband while she like would like weed whack in the corner so i've okay. like definitely Fetish made play. relationships stronger i would say <laughs> do you have any fetishes I would say I love gangbangs. I love the visual of having a lot of men service me and bonus if they're hot, but they don't kind of need to. What's <laughs> the most number of guys you've had participate? 50, 50 guys in a gangbang? Yeah, but that was because I was I, I was just kind of living in the moment. <laughs> Did you take all 50 cum shots? Um, no. So it was it was kind of like I, have, I was like the in and out of like gangbangs. I was like two minutes, bah, two minutes, bah, two minutes, bah. I just wanted to like collect my body count, you know. Got tested the day after and I lived, so. <laughs> and you lived. Yeah. But there was no cameras back then. I wasn't getting recorded. So it was just for fun. I wasn't getting paid. I was just in the moment. More power to you. I feel like for me, it's like to each his own again. Like it's one of those things. Like yeah. I feel like when people really, if you have, if you really like that, then mm -hmm. fuck it. Why shouldn't she be allowed to do Literally. it? Literally. Like, and that's why for me, why I was always a sexual person person and knowing mm -hmm. that and why I like with porn was because I liked it but it was also in a like a in a close little family of like we all get tested we we're doing it, whatever yeah, so all these people are freaks safer. and all these people are doing want to do the same thing so if we all want to do it together and fucking make magic let's just do it mm -hmm. do you like gangbangs or like what's your fetish I'm not a big I've done one gangbang in my life oh wow and You're well because there's some people that you may like to fuck that you want to be in part of your train a train is multiple I, people so. I love sex parties I feel but is it always random or is it people you I, know? I would I would say I go to the same sex parties and same sex clubs I don't actually so do a monthly thing. train I but I would say like once every 60 90 days there's like a train that happens in my life that's like not a work train you know, but like a train that just kind of. I like that habits. there's different classifications. There's work trains. trains, and then there's you know there's like like trains for yourself. Yeah, you keep and those I, trains. <laughs> <laughs> and I and I like those like trains to myself. I go to Executive Affairs. I go to Kinky Rabbit Club, which are is some, that in LA? Yes, or, okay. you should go. They're so fun, and you can just watch. I used to bring guys on their first date to a sex club. How do they know that you're just watching? Like you wear like some kind of color. You're like, please stay away. I'm just watching. Like how does it, yeah. how do they know? It's, it's so much easier than a normal club because you could just say like, hey, I'm just watching. And then that's just that. Like everyone. And, is, and also away. I would say a lot of women kind of just there and like are part of the audience and stuff. Okay, you know, for me, I like to kind of directly be like, <laughs> it's oh, like time to go. Zoomies world over here. <laughs> All right. So we're about to play Truth With Texas. Are you ready? We're warmed yes. up. We asked you know some questions we got to you know i feel like we lubed you up enough i'm all opened up we're all opened up all your holes one day will be airtight we're manifesting for that for you here yeah. at private talk after dark all right so how this works it is truth with texas we have four aces each ace suit is a different type wow. of question from romantic spicy naughty and kinky Ooh. we will go through each of these did you cards. make those cards yourself i didn't make the cards but i made the question oh, okay i was like <laughs> i want to play bring this at home <laughs> it'll be out in your home soon yeah okay. all right first card ace of ace of club so clubs. it's a kinky question oh. And you are definitely a kinky girl. Yeah. All right. Bondage, yes or no? Of course. I've been tied up, upside down, thrown around like luggage. I was like in there luggage. for two hours in that closet, so yeah. <laughs> Weirdest place you've had sex? I have I paid um, a plane in Vegas to let me fuck on the plane. 
and just I, like a stationary plane or no it was you? flying okay. and like it was a really tiny plane with no air conditioning so it was very sweaty and the turbulence was insane so i felt like i was like was anal sex had uh no because i would lit i was if i was giving poop dick before i would definitely give poop dick then because that was kind of scary cautious cautious yeah. <laughs> any f- oh, we answered that one have you ever called someone the wrong name i I have definitely, I used to have a partner that like our boundary of each other was I didn't call anyone daddy. It's just so hard to not say that. It kind of just slips out. And I was in Mexico one time and I was like, hey, papi, to like this Hispanic gentleman. And my partner was like, that's dad in Spanish. And I was like, I didn't know it was like every type of daddy. I didn't know it was language. (laughs) Like, I didn't know it was, like, international. Like, he was like, okay, if you fucked a Chinese guy, would you call him dad in, like, Mandarin? And I was like, probably not. I don't know. Sorry. Yeah, I would. Yeah, you would. I would find it. I would. I would would figure it out. (laughs) Most number of times you've had sex in a day? I have definitely had sex 50 times a day because I guess they were in there. Oh, that's true. Uh Good point. Uh Mm, Sex skill you're most proud of? Sex what? Sex skill you are most proud of? I can definitely give some sloppy. Like <laughs> sloppy toppy queen? Yeah, I'm like a drooler. I'm definitely like a <laughs> type of girl. Have you ever had a partner that was too kinky for you? I've definitely had guys, especially as an Asian woman, like when dating, like navigating like the white guy landscape. I feel like a lot of them want to be my daddy, like without like really proving like that we c- I can trust them or like. You're like my can- boyfriend said no, I can't call you daddy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like I've definitely had partners that are just like really into BDSM, and I I like it if it leads to like a really cool orgasm, but if it kind of just leads to me like feeling like ouch that was weird, then I kind of don't want to do that. <laughs> Have you ever? Woke Woken up next to someone that you didn't know their name. No, because I'm the sober Sally, so I always. Well, actually, I would. I've definitely fucked. But that people. doesn't mean that you didn't know their name. I've definitely fucked people, and I haven't known their name. I would say during any gangbang, I've never been like. Hey, but what's you your didn't name? wake up to them. Yeah, like yeah. In, a, in that I, kind of setting, like so, if you woke up, spent the night with somebody that you were fucking, you had a fun time. No, I never spend the night. I'm so like weird about it because when I was like. 21 or so someone broke into my house and i think it was a guy i used to fuck and he like like just like well uh, robbed all your shit yeah he like robbed me of like a bunch of like my stuff so i kind of had to start over and like move back with my parents he's probably still watching right now fuck you asshole <laughs> fuck you bro <laughs> right. but dick was great i would fuck again <laughs> no if he stole your shit bitch you leave that dick alone you have enough dicks to fuck okay yeah. <laughs> ace of spades that is a diamond, my love. Oh, you should know what diamonds are because diamonds are a girl's best friend. Yeah. And it's a spicy <laughs> question. Worst hookup story? Worst hookup story. I would say um, the first time I ever got with a girl. I So first of all, it was really hard for me to land a date with a girl because I feel like I could be like, you're so hot. Okay, so it was like, a date situation. It, it wasn't was a like date. a... Well, she told me to come over. Okay. And it was near Halloween and she was also Asian. Um, she was Japanese. I had black hair. She had black hair. And she was like, I want to be Mr. Clean for Halloween. And I was like, cool. Mm, so she was like, hat? do you want to shave my head? Oh, I was like, so mm. scary. Yeah, so we like got in a shower and we were naked and I shaved her head. And I was... But I, you're looking like, oh, like you don't want to, but you're like, I shaved it. But yeah. you're like, if I'm making that face, I'm not doing it. I'm like, I'm going home. Yeah. You shave your own head. I'm not responsible and for this mess. I looked at her and when she was bald, I kind of was not attracted to her anymore. I kind of oh was goodness. like, I didn't want to feel like she, I just wanted to the fuck because she had like a nice head of hair so we got to it and i ate her out and then with me have you ever eaten a girl out at that time before no that's my first with okay. a girl but with me she like wrapped my pussy in like saran wrap like you what? know and like you know like like mm-hmm. held it over like a balloon and like licked oh, on top like of like the plastic wrap and i kind of was like mm. that's not fair yeah it's not, not fair. fair we should have saran wrapped each other's pussies you know <laughs> like, like tip for tat you motherfucker yeah no and then we put the, we pulled the strap out this was so advanced for my first time i was so nervous how does she have saran wrap and a strap on just <laughs> next door to her bed like yeah, huh? she <laughs> is, we, we knew what we were going to do i just didn't know she'd be bald during that time well you shaved her head how do yeah. you not know about it you were doing it, was, it i didn't plan my day to go down that like that so well, you didn't plan for her to ask you yeah i mean i did it i'm a people pleaser i'm a giver um and i was like fucking her doggy and like mid- i knew i was doing trash dude i knew i was like after like two minutes she like no sounds were coming out this was like a silent 
I suddenly you like, are realized, you alive, ma'am? Yeah, hey, I suddenly is realized. Is this thing on? Is um, <laughs> we need to give men more credit because I was tired, my thighs were burning, and she turned around and was like, you could just stop. And oh. um, we never met again. Was that upsetting to you? I just was like, you know what? I have a lot of ways to go. It definitely made me insecure. But maybe she was just not really secure with her, that all thing happening yeah. either. You know, maybe it has nothing, it really yeah. has nothing oh, to do that, with Oh, it didn't end there. Because then she turned around and she was like, make me come. I was oh. like, okay. And then I held the Hitachi on her pussy, but she was like, don't move, don't move, don't move. So for like 45 minutes, I just held it like this and like, stared like at her. Like, my hands are tired. And she was like not moving. She was just like, and I kind of was like, I don't know. I don't feel like we're having sex anymore. I feel like I'm You're holding your vibrator. Me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I kind of was like, this You're is You're a vibrator stand? Yeah. I'm like, I'm like the vibrator like holder. <laughs> Yeah, that doesn't sound sexy. That doesn't. I like mm. to be involved. Like I, I feel can't like be. It made me insecure to like ask girls on dates because I was like, oh, she's gonna clown me for not knowing how to eat pussy and like. No, you know. I think that again, that was a her problem, not a your problem. Yeah. I think that it, you know, it's one of those things you just have to figure it out. Mm-hmm. It's like you know, but again, if you're not talking at all and you're still doing what she asked you to do for forty five fucking minutes, <laughs> it's not the one. And it was like the room was so silent, like except for the. Bzzz I would have like laughed. The- like I'm too. I can't. I'm too. Yeah. yeah. And I would be like, is this good? Is this good? She'd be like, like, shh, shh, be quiet. Like, just. I would have been like, I would have said, mic drop and walked out of that fucking bitch and be like, I need an Uber. I can't, I can't, I can't with you. Yeah. <laughs> all right, next card. Dude, so I basically play all of them. You do. This is the Ace of Spades. That is, and it is a naughty question, <laughs> uh-huh. is our favorite here at Private Talk After Dark. Ooh. I hope you are liking this episode. Make sure that you like, comment down below. <laughs> Handcuffs or blindfold? I like. So I like getting tied up, so I like handcuffs. I would say every time I've had a blindfold, I'm like a curious bitch. I hate surprises. So I'm always like, what? What are you doing? Like, I'm always... I, I like I to want, be in control. Yeah, I want to see at least what's going on. I once went to this party where this girl was getting trained on, but she had earplugs and a blindfold on and a mouth gag. And, like, so she would, like, you know, like, signal things with her hands if she was, like, feeling whatever. And I was like, I don't know. That's a lot. That's like I'm floating in space and like dicks are just getting in my pussy. What are <laughs> something that's totally off limits for you? I would say fisting. I'm not really like. Have you tra- been fisted? No, I fisted people, but I feel like I don't know. I know that the pu- I know I know that. The Have you pussy- ever had any knuckle kids thrown at your face? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, you sound disappointed. Yeah, I know inherently <laughs> that the pussy will get back to normal, but I'm just so scared of like getting like stretched out that one Bitch, time. Bitch, baby, babies come out. I know, it. but like fists, like I don't know. I feel like the body, my body was not made for fisting. It was made for maybe babies. If you had the right partner who had to fist you, then probably I just if don't let anybody. If she had tiny fist. little baby hands, yeah. You'd be surprised. You you get in there, girl. You just yeah. know things. <laughs> you know yeah. things. Well, I've like fucked some pretty large dicks, so I guess like it's the it same. Stretches. It's yeah. elastic, girl. Things yeah. can happen. <laughs> if you're really into it and if you like it, it's the right way, not just fucking someone fucking Mike yeah. Tyson and your pussy. Yeah. Like, you know, I'm not saying any of that. Yeah. But you know, you just, yeah. there's a certain, you know. Yeah. I just really, I've done it before. To the, I, did, I did it to that woman who was blindfolded and earplugged and mouth gagged and she seemed to be like I'm cool. fucking boring compared to her. These fucking yeah. like parties you just show up that someone's blindfolded. Dude, fucking I like, can geez. bring you but everyone would like scream. They'd be like, that's her. I need security. I can't yeah. go anywhere with your fucking yeah. sexual yeah. ass. Yeah. You can have like binoculars like, or something <laughs> and be like, okay. I'll just have a handcuff on you like you know i have a leash too. Um, i'll be able to tie to my waist mm-hmm. you know and i'll, like, just, like I'll let you like things. go out but then like you know it's like you know six feet and then yeah. like reel you back in when it's time for them to leave i you wouldn't alone. mind if you put me on a leash <laughs> hey we're, we're gonna manifest it we're gonna put you on our leash next, <laughs> next episode <laughs> have you ever faked an orgasm yeah what the fuck i would say but you know i would say for porn i definitely try to make it real because it's just a longer video if i just make can you it give just... us an example of your faked orgasm oh yeah just do, want... mm-hmm. no. <laughs> do yeah, i can do, do it, it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> do it. <sighs> no i can't do it i, just I need more that was like a, that <laughs> was a, that was a fucking what is it called blue lips if i've ever seen one of them yeah. in my life i need <laughs> i need 20 15 more seconds uh, oh fuck oh my god uh, 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 fuck oh my god fuck, fuck. Uh, she's definitely faked oh, it before yeah. she's definitely faked it and 
she's really good at faking it. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure a lot oh, of y'all are questioning. If you were men it. watching it right now, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's what she sounded like when she fucked me. Yeah. What the fuck? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't fake it. My my chair is wet. <laughs> lies, lies told by her. Lies. <laughs> Oral sex, sloppy or clean? Sloppy? Sloppy. What the frick? What kind of question is that? Yeah. Like, you I know, mean, there's some people who don't like it. Yeah. I would say I've definitely had guys. Some people who would rather just like do a good blowjob, but clean it all up. And like, you know, I've definitely had guys be like, you're way too sloppy. Like everything is soaked. But I just kind of I like drool and just like, like gagging on it and throwing up a little bit. Have you ever been turned down for sex? I, yeah, I would say because like in a sex club, it's so easy. Oh, it happened to me yesterday. Oh, let's talk yesterday. about it. Yesterday, no, I was on a. Who podca- said no to you? I was on the Down Bad podcast, and they brought a virgin along, and he. They brought a virgin along. Was, <laughs> yeah, he was so cute. He was Asian. He was in his twenties, like late twenties, I think, <laughs> and he did IT. And I was like, "Do you like want to kiss?" And he was like. And I was like, okay, all right, all right. Did you kiss him like that? Um, no, we, we kissed after like an hour or two of talking. And I was like, do you want to touch my boob? And he was like, oh, I don't know, I don't know. And I was like, seven minutes in heaven? I don't know. You can, we can. And he was like, ah, no, I'm tired. Oh, so, he got nervous. Yeah, so I was like, all right, no pressure. I don't want like your first time to be me of and all it's people. It's like rapey, like you know, because yeah. then you're just, like forcing someone. You're like, you want him to be like, hey, can I just touch something? Yeah, <laughs> and like just in general, I want to fuck a guy that's like wants to fuck. Yeah, me. but you would throw a bone if he wanted really needed. Yeah, it. if he really wanted. If he was it, like, hey, yeah, can you be my first? You would do it. No, I've never fucked a virgin before. Would you? You've never- I would so fuck a virgin. It's like my. <laughs> it's like on top of being airtight. It's like one of those like mission things I have to. If there's any virgins out there watching this episode please go into her dms or her only fans and become my first one virgin. of her first virgins yeah my we can pop her cherry from private talk after yeah. dark how cool would that would be i would love to take a virgin out on a date you know wine and dine him stop and, uh-huh. no uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> you know like go, go nice and slow he should be doing this you're yeah. taking his virginity but i, I guess just- I want to feel like it's, it will never happen again. You know, like I want to make sure he's like, all right. And then you're never going to talk to him again. I, mm, I don't know. I feel like <laughs> that sounded like a hard no. <laughs> I feel like I'm like a regular guy. So honestly, if he was like really sweet, I don't know. It could be the start of something new. Oh, mm. OK. Open to possibilities. Yeah. Have you ever hooked up with a friend's sibling? Um, yeah, I would. Mm, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I definitely have. Did you remain friends afterwards? I would say I definitely got fucked by a brother and his brother, and that's kind oh. of like his <laughs> friend, right? I would say we were friends in that moment. Yeah. <laughs> so is that your first brother combo? Um. Yeah, but I've done like uncles and. We did dad mm-hmm. and a brother. No, um, no. I want to do dad and son. Like, like he's like seventy eight, and the other guy's like thirty five. Like that would be great. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. I like it. Mm-hmm. Role play. Do you like it? Of course. What is I've, your favorite character? To I be? love to be a schoolgirl. You know, I feel like, well, I watch a lot of anime and I feel, so I feel like every Asian woman is like given by birthright that like sailor costume by like birth. So I feel like I just like love dressing up in like a, in like a Japanese schoolgirl costume and just going bananas. Sexy. Mm-hmm. Do you like golden showers? I like my golden showers to be a little clear. And if so, then yes. <laughs> then keep on going. Mm-hmm. All right. Last card is an ace of hearts, which is a romantic question. Mm. Have you ever slid into somebody's DMs? Yes, I have definitely. I slid into yours. Ooh, that was. So that was yeah. I saw that. I was like, oh, yeah. OK. It's me. I, I would say I'm a pretty forward person. Like, I like to initiate. I don't like to wait. I want sometimes I feel like guys are like shy to approach me because I'm me and I'm kind of like intense and it might be intimidating. Um, but I like I'll, I'll slide in and be like, what celebrity DM are you in right now that you're waiting on hold that they mm-hmm. haven't answered? <laughs> <laughs> I would say. I have, I would say like right now I'm kind of talking to Omarion, which oh, is so random. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Like we're fucking Omarion or you're like, you know, it's like I, on rotation. I think I want to fuck Omarion. You yeah. want to fuck yeah. him. So you're in his DMs or you're it's, already in his text I'm messages. In the, I got the number. I got the digits. We'll see what <laughs> happens. But I'm really busy and I feel like people need to understand like I'm like working a lot. Like, you know, like me hanging out with Alexis, Texas is super fun, but it's still like work, you know, mm-hmm. like I can't. 
I don't really have the mental capacity. So you wouldn't to just hang out there. with me, um, like by myself? Oh yeah, we could. It could be you and me, a box of chocolates, <laughs> some roses. <laughs> this guy. I like white chocolate. I uh, like you know. I like more salty things. I like flowers. Yeah, mm-hmm. we could have like fried chicken. After. Fried chicken's great. I like to fuck after. I like to fuck first and then eat after. I do too. Dates. Yeah, I don't like because to feel like food like heavy before. You I don't want to feel fat. And also, like if I actually liked you, I would hang out with you after. You mm-hmm. know. So that's the test. If you're gonna hang out with me after we eat. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. Lights on or lights off? Lights on, baby. Watch. Like I love to. I love to like just put on a show. I like. I'm a, a pretty enthusiastic lady. Like you know, I built this body. I was surgery made. Your surgeon made, built that body. Yeah, you I'm like give him a shout out. I'm a I'm <laughs> Dr. Young in Houston, Texas. <laughs> Texas, baby. <laughs> but I'm super genetically modified for a reason. I want you to see it. <laughs> hey, I like that. You're straight and to the point. Perfect uh-huh. date night for you. Perfect date night. We fuck first. And then we Fried eat, chicken. Yeah, fried chicken. And then we like I, you know, I'm like a museum girl. Like, I like to, like, look at things and stroll and talk and, like, get to know you, actually. I like I like to, like, see, like, what you have to say about stuff, you know? Like, I don't like things like movies and shit where we don't talk. We can't talk. You or, like to communicate. And I don't really like loud places. Like, I like to, like, talk and, like, you know, overshare and trauma bond and stuff. Overshare. <laughs> what are deal breakers for you? You gotta be, you can't be, like, a jealous person. Or if you are a jealous person, you need to be able to handle that correctly because we are swinging this is we are not we I'm, swing it baby we are swinging, we are swinging. Or if we're not swinging i'm out you know I, <laughs> I don't i don't think i would date a guy who smokes cigarettes how you, why not because you I don't like the like the smell. the smell yeah i wouldn't want to kiss well you don't really do anything so i could see that too being yeah. more of like a an apparent thing that's mm-hmm. like what if he like you know brushed his teeth and all that yeah. stuff? Yeah, uh-huh. I mean that's fine. But I feel like his clothes would smell like cigarettes and stuff. Off limits. Mm-hmm. If you needed a fun safe word, what would it be? Bananas. <laughs> that sounds fun. It's like it's re- like three syllables. Bananas. <laughs> all right, that is truth with Texas. Woo! How riveting. Thank you so much for coming on Private Talk After Dark and just getting to know you a little ah! bit more. Mm-hmm. Do you have anything you want to ask Miss Texas? Hmm, I would say. What do you like sexually? Like, what turns you on when the cameras are off? And I guess you don't even have off-camera sex, but, like, with with a person. I mean, I do have off-camera sex. It just hasn't happened in a while. Yeah. But... (laughs) Is um, that a reason? Are you busy? Or do you just not want to have sex? Or... Um, for me, it's, like, it's quality over quantity. Mm -hmm. So, for me, it's, like, for me, I am really busy. And for me to set aside time to spend time with a person I want, you know, to do all that, it takes a lot. Um... But I'm open to it. I just mm-hmm. don't have anybody that I... Do you find do. dating, like, I'm, hard? Because you're... Because dating is definitely hard. It's mm-hmm. not impossible, but it's also, like, you gotta, you know, be honest and put yourself out there as well. So, yeah. you know, it's um, being realistic of what you really want and, like, having those intentions of going out there. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and again, the world just kind of started opening up again. So, yeah. you know, I just started really outside. going out and, like, doing stuff. And, mm-hmm. you know, it's summer's coming around. So, you know, who knows what's going Do you get happen. recognized? Do you like getting recognized? I definitely get recognized. It's not overwhelmingly you know mm-hmm. as such a thing you know for me I like to say that I blend in I don't really feel yeah. like I'm um I'm just me you know what yeah. I mean so for me I just kind of like do my own thing if I saw I you at my Ralph's I would shit myself you know I've had people <laughs> I've had people follow me in my Ralph's and have to have the security like, oh no that's tell the weird. guy to like I would shit leave. myself and leave I wouldn't um, follow you but yeah I mean I mean my thing is just like talk and then when you you feed off that conversation and if it goes positive mm-hmm. then you can go another yeah. way when I tell you alright nice to meet you get the mm-hmm. fuck up on my face yeah. like, it's, it's, <laughs> when I close the conversation it is what it is but mm-hmm. you know I'm definitely not an unapproachable it's just the way that you approach somebody and yeah. I think with me now because of like being Alexis Texas and even though if I haven't done scenes in a really long time I'll always mm-hmm. have people be known as the porn star yeah. so it's like I want people who's going to approach me if in the dating sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can know and respect who Alexis Texas is, but I'm so much more than that. That doesn't, porn doesn't yeah. define me. I'm just a part in a segment real. of who mm-hmm. I am that there's a lot of things. So if you're wanting to get to know that part of me, I'm all for it. But, mm-hmm. you know, Alexis Texas ends with, you know. Yeah, it's a persona. It's like, you know, meant for you to jack off and be happy And around. you keep jacking off to my only fans. Yeah, keep jacking off. That's right. All yeah. right, guys, thank you so much for being a part of <laughs> Private Talk After Dark. I, it was such a pleasure having you, Kasumi, on the couch, Yay. getting to know you. Private Talk After Dark. Please let us know where we can uh, support you. Um, so my OnlyFans is Kazumi's World. It's currently $3. I've been giving out free nudes to the Vaxxed mm. because... 
Boosters yeah. count. <laughs> Halfbacks fine. <laughs> but right. besides that, my Instagram is Kazumi's World. And yeah, st let's stay slutty. All right, Kazumi. <laughs> thank you again for coming on Private Talk After Dark. And until next time. Woo!